E-Class, when we see the, the E-Class on the launch calendar, it's something we see three, four years out, and we realize, wow, okay, this is going to be a big one, because every E-Class is a really big deal to all of us. It's a car that means so much to so many. It's meant so much to our brand. Uh, we've had it around for more than 70 years. It's the car, it's the most, it's the highest selling car in our entire history. It's probably contributed more to Mercedes to put Mercedes where it is in terms of leading innovation, engineering, design, technology. The E-Class has been at the heart of so many of those things. And here we are 13 million units in since 1947. So obviously a big contributor to the brand. Every generation of the E-Class has had something in common in, in that it has contributed something significantly, not just to the brand, but to the entire industry. Technology and the E-Class have always gone hand in hand, and this innovation has, some, has been something that's meant, meant something and been so important to everyone. Uh, early on, the second generation car was the first unibody car. The third generation car uh, was the first with the passenger safety cell, something that Bella Barania, one of our famous R&D engineers, uh, developed and now that's something that's in every car today. Formatic all-wheel drive first appeared on the E-Class. That's something that now represents 55% of our lineup. So something very significant in bringing E-Classes and, and other cars within the Mercedes-Benz lineup to let's say the colder parts of the world. Um, so very important to us. Blue Tech, our clean diesel technology, appeared first on the E-Class, something we're very proud of and something that you see on a number of our car lines today. And finally, um, more recently on the 212 model, the 9G Tronic transmission first appeared on that car and now it's making it uh, onto more and more of our lineup. So the E-Class, it's had one thing in common, innovation has always been part of it, and that will continue to be the story. So with our new generation E-Class, innovation is really, uh, you know, if you could, if you could say these go to 11, that's the E-Class, uh, in terms of uh, using a quote from uh, Spinal Tap. It's something that uh, the cars have always had a lot of innovation, and that doesn't change here. And obviously, if you ask what's new with the E-Class, everything, all the way down to the new key design. Everything you see, touch, and feel is new. And so it's something that we're really excited about, that the E-Class is the flag bearer for all this new technology. Of course, why do people buy cars? We'll talk a little bit about design. So of course, the design of the car is always such an important thing. It's the emotion that drives a luxury purchase, and that doesn't change, even with something like a Mercedes-Benz. So design of the car, it's really a great design. You'll notice the front is twin torch headlamp design. Um, you'll notice this just at the front, very distinctive for the E-Class. You'll also notice a long shoulder line that continues up from the front of the car all the way through the vehicle. Similar, if you, if you look for a similar line in Mercedes-Benz history, you can look to the first generation CLS and you'll see a, a similar line that moves all the way from the front of the vehicle all the way to the back. You'll see these are also LED headlamps, that's something standard on the car, as well as LED tail lamps. The LED tail lamps have a really neat uh, piece as well, what we call our stardust effect. And the stardust effect just gives it a little bit of a, kind of a glistening that you'll notice when you look at it. But one thing with our tail lamps, we don't, it's, and it's kind of a typical Mercedes thing, beauty is always so much more than skin deep. The tail lamps on the car actually have variable intensity, so they will vary the intensity based on the time of day in terms of the light that goes on that, that you have outside. That way, for the car behind you, you're not just blowing them out with really high intensity LED light. I wish I could say that for some of our competitors, uh, because when I pull up behind other cars, you're just blinded at night by their tail lamps. That won't happen with this car, and that's just how we think. We're always thinking not for the driver, just for the driver, but also for the other road users. So you see that we have our sport model, which has the star in the grill. Most of you are familiar from that. We do that also with the C-Class. And then we have our luxury model with the standing star and the traditional grill design. A few more different chrome accents, things like that. That way a customer can choose the more traditional conservative view or a sportier, more contemporary Mercedes-Benz. So two versions of the E-Class, both coming together. So that's the, a little bit on the outside. Now, just size-wise, the car is almost two inches longer overall. The wheelbase is nearly three inches longer. And that extra room really pays off on the interior in terms of better interior volume, storage space, a lot of nice things on the outside. But at the same time, the car goes on a diet. Uh, something that I could, wish I could say for myself, I wish I could still get taller and larger, but actually lose weight. But the car is 154 pounds lighter than the outgoing car. Uh, so it really does pay off in terms of efficiency and delivering the performance that we want for our customers. So the outside, of course, that's great, but really the inside is where you'll feel like the car doesn't just take one generation, maybe even two generations forward. The E-Class will continue, a, let's say, call it a recent tradition, I guess since the launch of the C-Class, but the C-Class, the GLC, and the S-Class 
you could really say that these cars take such a huge leap in their interior. I have no doubt that the quality, fit and finish, and the materials on this car will be segment leading by a long shot. And so that's something we're really excited about to bring to the E-Class because that's where you spend so much time. You spend so much time in the car. You want to feel those rich materials, real wood trims, beautiful design, leather, all these things, real metal finishes, all these things really bring the car together. And of course, we combine that with some amazing technology, and we'll talk a little bit about that. One of those things that we're introducing is, of course, the 12.3-inch high-def screen. That's command. So our command navigation is a standard feature on this new car, and we have it with a 12.3-inch screen. Our touch control buttons on the steering wheel, now that you've had a chance to play around with those, uh, they're really a, a great innovation, something that's all new on the E-Class, and what we love about it, it gives you the ability to control all of the functions while keeping your hands on the wheel, and that's something we feel like is very important. Wireless charging is also possible with the new car. Uh, so that's just you have a wireless charging mat built into the center console. That's something that's right there for you. And our ambient lighting and Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, all standard features. Um, one thing that's always great with the ambient lighting, of course, if you, you, know, if you can't quite choose, you have 64 colors to choose from, uh, you should find something that works for you there. But ambient lighting is something that we came up with years ago that not only is beautiful, but it serves a really great function. What we found is that Road users, when you're driving at night, one of the hardest things to handle is oncoming traffic and headlamps. Because if you're in a very dark cabin, your eyes are fully dilated. If you have a little bit of light in the cabin, you bring your eye, your eyes are better able to handle the light from the oncoming traffic. And that's something, just again, beauty is more than skin deep. It's the Mercedes-Benz way of thinking where you're always looking for the engineering behind it that makes a lot of sense and then make it beautiful. And that's, uh, that's really a great order to go in. And you can say that's a, a lot of what the E-Class is all about. But let's talk a little bit about the touch control buttons because this is something that is completely new on the E-Class. You can fully expect you'll see this on future models going forward and uh, it really is a great function. So these touch control pads just located on the steering wheel, they work a lot like what you would have with a smartphone. You're, you can scroll, you go up, down, right, left, press to select. And the way it works, we have a little video and uh, it shows you with uh, the left control button, you're controlling the instrument cluster. So the left control button controls what's on the left side of the cockpit and the right control button controls the command screen. So we really like that separation. That way you're not confused about, okay, wait, which one is this one working? So you know with your left hand, you're able to control all of these functions. And then with your right hand, you're controlling the functions on the command screen, which is the radio, navigation, media, telephone, all those things that you would control normally with the right hand or moving your right hand down to the command controller, you can now do fully with your hands on the steering wheel and your eyes on the road. So we love this new control interface because we feel like it's really a great innovation in terms of safety, but also just making it easier to use. So it's just one more way to interact with the vehicle. You still have the command controller, you have the touchpad here, you can use voice control, but now the steering wheel controls have gotten much more functional and much more easy to use. So. Stay tuned, you'll see that on other cars. Uh, another piece of technology in the car, you'll notice the widescreen cockpit. So this is this full widescreen. It's two 12.3 inch displays, which give you all the information you need and lay out beautifully uh, in terms of just presenting the information to you in a usable and beautiful format. The cool thing about this is we look at this and we say, you know, we have this beautiful, it's almost like a canvas to work with. So why wouldn't you give it some variability? So something that we're starting with this car for the first time ever, you have the ability to have an individual user interface design. So we have sort of what we call a classic screen. And what, what you'll notice is the right side is the command screen. Those stay the same. But on the left side, you can have what we call our classic version. It's a similar, it's kind of the traditional two gauge layout that you know from Mercedes-Benz. You have the speedometer on the uh, left and the tack on the right. We then have a sport version, which just changes the color scheme. And then we have a progressive version, which changes it quite a bit, where you have just a central gauge, and then the ability to plank that gauge with information screens, which we find is really helpful. You could have a navigation screen over here, you could have radio over here, and then you have the tack and the speedometer built into the middle. So some neat variability. Uh, we like this for the future also, because I think it gives us some ideas for things that we can do going forward, and, and, and some animation and things like that that help you, and also give you some uh, you know chance to have fun in the cabin. So, a neat, uh, neat interface for sure, and if you want to, uh, you have any questions on how to change these things, you can do that within the command system. We're all here to uh, support you if you have some questions on, on uh, adjusting those things. So that gives you a little bit on the outside and the inside, but you can't talk about a Mercedes without talking safety. And at the heart of uh, a safe car is, of course, a rigid body structure that's built incredibly well. So obviously this car includes all of the latest technology, everything that we know, but it all starts with a rigid body structure. 
This is a combination of aluminum. You'll see this in blue. You'll see high strength steels in, uh, in red and in the ultra high strength steel, which is mainly in the firewall, the, the, the roof rails, and also the side impact areas. So the trick with this, obviously we're using our crumple zone that was invented many, many generations ago, but building a car which collapses in the proper way, which keeps the passenger safety cell intact. Obviously that's at the heart of what we're doing and we have a car with a rigid safety structure that we're very confident will be uh, best to finish. And 40% uh, aluminum based on this car and that contributes a lot to the weight safety.